Praise the Lord, everybody. Welcome to Glory to God Ministries Boot Camp. This is our fourth week in doing our boot camp meeting, and today's lesson is about stewardship. So let us pray first, and we'll talk about stewardship. Father God, we come to you right now in the mighty person name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. We thank you right now for this the day that the Lord has made, and we shall rejoice and be glad in it. Father God, we thank you right now for all heavenly blessings that you poured upon us from this day forth. We thank you right now for the favor God has upon us. We thank you, God, for your mercy and grace. Lord, we ask you to let us have ears to hear what thus saith the Lord. Let us have eyes to see, not just in the natural, but in the spiritual. Lord, we ask you to bless us right now throughout this lesson in the name of Jesus that we get the revelation of stewardship and everything that we need to know. We need to know about stewardship and being good stewards and about tithes and offering. We give you praise, honor, and glory in advance. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. So the subject is tithes and offering, and the lesson is about stewards, stewardships. It says we are stewards of everything and owners of nothing. Steward means one who manages another's property, finances, or other affairs. And let's look at the parable about talents in Matthew 25, verses 14 through 30. And I want you to read that on your own time. It's about the parable of the, of the talents. Matthew chapter 25, verses 14 through 10. And the question is, are you a good steward over your money and the things God has trusted you to do? That's the question you have for yourself, are you? Are you using what God gives you to increase his work? God gives each and, each and every one of us gifts and talents. And you have to recognize what your gift is and what your talents are. So now you use them for the glory of God. So you manifest it in the earth and give God the glory for everything. It's nothing about us, but it's all about him. Amen? It says, don't allow your talents to be taken for you not being a good steward of it. Because in the, in the parable of the ten talents, of the talents, we see that those who didn't use the talents wisely it was taken away from them. Amen? It says, what is the purpose of money? Some of us need to ask God this question. Have God, have God teach you how to use what he gives you properly? Because if you don't know the purpose of an item, you will abuse it. If you don't know the purpose of an item, you will abuse it. So ask the Lord, what the gift and talent that you have for me, let me not take the glory upon myself, but give you the glory in all things because we know the gifts and talents come from you. So ask the Lord, Lord, what is the gifting that I have? What is the talent that I have? And what is the, what is my purpose for you to use for your kingdom? It says, uh, having the knowledge leads to wealth. Proverbs, verse 24, 4, and Hosea 4, 6. And Proverbs 24, 4 says this, and by the knowledge shall its chambers be filled with all precious and pleasant riches. Hosea, my people all perish or destroyed for a lack of knowledge. So we need to get the knowledge of the Lord because the day that we're living in, the time that we live in, we can receive all kinds of words through, of the Bible, through Bibles, through the uh, videos, through tapes, through the video Bibles. We can receive the word anytime and anywhere. So the knowledge is, is for us, but we have to receive the knowledge and ask for it and use the knowledge that God has given us. Amen. It says, do not allow a lack of knowledge to perish your wealth. Why would why should uh, tithes and why should tithes and giving offering? Some people today don't believe that is, is needed for today. Some believe that giving your tithes and offering was just for the Old Testament saints, but that's not the issue at all. God created everything. Genesis one and one. Therefore, everything belongs to Him. But He allows us to be stewards and gave us dominion over the land. Genesis 1:28 through 30. Plus, we are created in his image. Being free will agents, we are not made to do anything, but since he loves us, he wants us to love and trust and obey him. Also, God is a jealous God. God, God and test the hearts of men. When you give your time and offering, it, it's like you're saying, God, thank you for in, in, instructing me with wealth. Thank you, Lord. I will obey you. I will love you. I will do your will. I will want to see the kingdom grow. It's a sacrifice, I know, but God, our Father, believes in sacrifice so much that he gave his only begotten Son, Jesus Christ, for our sin. God is, he said, we're supposed to be imitators of Christ, and the greatest imitation we do is be the God-loving God that he is. And God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son. And the Son that he gave us a seed, because the seed, it keeps on, uh, it keeps on giving a uh, fruit each and every year. It continually have a harvest. So when Jesus died and rose again, everybody except Jesus Christ as Lord and Savior, that's because the seed that he sown. And the seed 
before it can grow, it has to die first and be planted. So when Jesus came down here on earth, was planted on earth and rose again on the third day, and everybody that believes in the name of Jesus and calls his name shall be saved. So we are the fruit of his spirit. We are the fruit of that seed. We are the harvest. So each and every day that somebody gets saved, that's a harvest. So because of Jesus Christ's seed. And God gave his very best because he gave him himself, his son, Jesus Christ. Never in any time they have been separated before except for this time. So God gave his very best so forth. Because he so loved the world. He loved us. He didn't want us to die and go to hell. He wanted to save us from ourselves. He wanted to save us from the sins of the world. So he said, this is how we're going to do it. I'm going to give myself. I'm going to give my son, Jesus Christ. And when he dies and you accept him, everything's going to be all right. Your sin will be forgiven for you. Amen? So that's a great harvest. So we have to be stewards of, of the things that God has imparted into our lives. Amen? Let's talk about uh, giving our tithes and offering. God's not asking you to give up what we don't have, but to give what we do have. Believe me, he knows what you have because he gave it to you. Say it again. He knows what you have because he gave it to you. Amen. God does not need your money because he's already owns everything. He owns it all. But he wants you to use faith and obedience in him to provide for you. He is a miracle working God. For example, in Matthew 15, 32 to 38, when Jesus fed 4,000 people with only seven loaves and a few fish, he can multiply wherever you give him. When Psalms 35 and 27 says, says that God takes pleasure in the prosperity of his servants. You're more than God's servants, but you are his child. Amen. It says, don't steal from your daddy or you'll be cursed. So you'd rather have a less 90% than a cursed 100%. God said, give unto me because give prove me still, well, says the Lord of hosts. See what I'll multiply it back to you. Because God's in the multiplication business. He never just add to it. He always multiply it back to you. He says a 30-fold, a 60-fold, a 100-fold, even a 1,000 times more according to the Word of God. So when the 4,000 people were fed, that was just counting the uh, the, uh, the, ch the women there, not including the children and the men. So it was over. So you can say over 12,000, 15,000 people were there. And God took the little boy's lunch and he multiplied it. And everybody was there had something to eat. The, the blessing was he said he took it he blessed it, and he gave it. So God said, give me something to work with. No matter what it is, I need something so I can multiply it back to me. I love you so much because I don't want you here in this desert place, haven't had anything to eat. It's get hot out here. We need to eat. So give me what you have. So give me the fish. He blessed it. He multiplied the fish. He multiplied the bread, and everybody was fed. And then he had 12 baskets left over. They had more than enough. That's the kind of God that we serve. That's the miracle in, it, in, in, in miracle in it is. It's a miracle in itself because who would have believed that he was going to feed these many, many people with a little boy's lunch? But they just watched, watched Jesus work it out. They gave it to him. He prayed over it. He blessed it, and he gave it. The miracle is when they started giving it out, every time they gave it out, there was still more in the basket. Every time he gave, they gave. They looked in the basket, they were still more fish to more bread and that's kept giving and kept giving if they never would have gave anything out they never would have experienced a miracle so what God is telling you to do I'll take care of your business if you take care of my business I know everything that you stand in need of I never know everything that you want of but just believe in me and trust in me so when you give your tithes and offering I always say a tithe will build will give you a house but the offering will fill it so just believe in me and I will multiply I'll make a way I don't know what because you don't know how I'm going to do it. Because what was you when I created the heaven and earth? I know everything about you. I know your tomorrow like you knew your yesterday. So I know exactly what you need and what you want. So just do what I ask you to do. Just be good stewards of things I, I've given you. And watch over and watch it grow. Amen. It says, don't, it says, don't worry if you just, just trust in the Lord and everything will be all right. God knows your heart and desires to bless you. Amen. Psalms 37.4 reads, delight yourself in the Lord. And he shall give you the desires of your heart. The desires. He said he'll give you the desires of your heart if you just like yourself in the Lord. Amen. This is time for a work quiz. How much time do you have left during a regular business day? Think about it. Only four hours. Example. If you sleep eight hours a day, it takes most Americans two hours to get ready for work. Taking showers, eating breakfast, getting kids ready, ironing clothes, 
packing lunch, etc., etc. It takes most Americans one and a half hours to get to and fro from work, 45 minutes to work and 45 minutes to get back home. Most American works eight to nine hours a day. For a calculation, let's say 8.5 calculations. 24 minus 8 equals 16. 16 minus 2 equals 14. 14 minus 1.5 equals 12.5. 12.5 minus 8.5 equals 4. That's how you get your four hours. So wow. That's a lot of time to get into your floor employer. <clears throat> Why not just be faithful and give your tithes and offering to God? Look how much out of the time of the 24 hour day that you give in your employer. You give him most of your day. Amen. Why not just be faithful and give your tithes and offering to God and let God work it out for you? Amen. All right. Let's read a prosperity scripture, prosperity commandment, prosperity declaration. It says, Father, in the name of your son, Jesus, I confess your word over my finances this day. As I do this, I say it with my mouth and believe it in my heart and know that your words will not return to, to me void, but accomplish whatever it says it will do. Therefore, I believe in the name of Jesus that all my needs are met according to Philippians 4.19. I believe that because I have given tithes and offerings to further your cause, Father, gifts will be given to me, good measure, Pressed down, shaken together, and running over will they pour into my bosom. For with the same measure I dealt it out, it will be measured back to me. Father, you have declared, you have delivered me out of the authority of darkness into the kingdom of your dear son. Father, I have taken place as your child. I thank you for that you have assumed that your place, that your place as my father, and you have made your home with me. You are taking care of me, even now, and enabling me to walk in love and wisdom and to walk in fullness of fellowship with your son. Satan, I bind you from all my finances, according to Matthew 18, 18, and love, <clears throat> and love, and loose you from all your assignments against me in the name of Jesus. So Satan, take your hands off my finances and everything that belongs to me in the name of Jesus. Amen. Here are some scriptures referenced about the prayer about the, out of the book, prayer, prayers that avail much. Father, I thank you for your ministering spirits are now free to minister for me, being in the, and being in the necess necessary finances. Father, I confess you are very present help in the trouble. In the time of trouble, you are more than enough. I confess, God, you are able to make all grace, every favor and earthly blessing come to me in abundance, so that I'm always in and always in circumstances furnished in abundance for every good work and charitable donations. Amen. Hallelujah. So look at the book called A Prayer Availeth Much. When you can declare and decree prosperity scripture, you declare and decree things over your life. This is how we do a dedication of your tithes and offering to the Lord. This is our prayer availeth much also. Dedication for your tithes. I profess this day unto the Lord God that I have come into his inheritance, which the Lord swore to give me, and land which you have provided for me in Jesus Christ in the kingdom of Almighty God. I was a sinner serving Satan. He was my God, but I called upon the name of Jesus, and you heard my cry and delivered me from the kingdom of your son into the kingdom of your dear son, Jesus. Jesus, as my Lord and high priest, I bring my first fruits of my income unto you and worship the Lord my God with it. I rejoice in all the good which you have given to me and my household. I have hearkened to the voice of the Lord my God and have done according to all he has commanded me. Now look down from your holy habitations from the heaven and bless me as you said in your word. I thank you, Father, in the name of Jesus. Amen. May the Lord have a blessing in the reading and the scriptures that he had given to us. So, Lord, we thank you and praise you, God, for every wisdom, every knowledge, and everything that you have done for us, that we will receive the word of God that you have for us, that we be good stewards as you have taught us to be. So, Lord, we thank you, God, for the gifts and talents that you have blessed, with, blessed us with. Because it's nothing about us, but it's all about you. So, Lord, let us be more like you and not like us. We thank you right now for favor. And the favor of God is not fair, but the show of his son. We are favor rights. Favor will get you more places than what money can get you. So, Lord, we thank you, God, for the favor of God is upon us. In the name of Jesus Christ, we thank you and we praise you. We, we, we welcome the Holy Spirit to lead you and direct us and guide us in all truth. In the name of Jesus. So, this concludes our our, our tonight's lesson in the study of uh, stewardship in our, our, our book.
both can't be. So we want you to be blessed, be good stewards over the things that you have, and don't have to worry about anything because God will take care of your business. First things first, if you take care of our business, God will take care of your business. So don't have a uh, or have a blessed 90% and not a curse 100% because God said he'll multiply it back into you. Trust him and just try him and see what he'll give. He said he knows your needs. He said you still, you'll never have a lack of any good thing. God said he's your provider. He's your father. He will take good care of you. So, so we ask you to receive the word of God tonight. Uh, study the word of God. Obtain the word of God. Be the steward of the things that God has given to you and let him work it out and continue to grow. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Until we see you again, may God bless you continuously. And love you to, I love you with the love of God, and there's nothing you can do about it. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. God bless you.